Okay, so one of the best things for ZBrush for me is the new Z Modeler tool. As someone who is definitely not a 3D guy, uh, it's perfect for me because I'm not uh, that great at Maya or Max. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of recreating one of the weapons that I have on the turtle. Uh, I use this thing for most of his weapons and even things like the straps and uh, wraps that I have on the turtle, I can go in and use the modeler to manipulate the edge loops and points on that, which is fantastic. And what you can see is the original side that I made is on the right. I'm using that as a guide and I'm walking through how I made it by pretty much just appending a, uh, a sphere, um, going in, hitting initialize and turning that into a Q cube, which I size down to about the rough size of the the width of the psi, stretched it out, uh, and uh, if you hold down spacebar, you get a whole host of options. So I hovered over one of the edge loops and held down the spacebar and selected insert edge loop. By doing that, I was able to take that cube and add some uh, geometry by adding some edge loops, kind of sliding them to exactly where I want. Uh, great, great thing for me too is being able to use the transpose tool as well as the um, uh, as well as the Z modeler uh, to really just get in there and rotate things, move and size uh, both points and um, both uh, the both the points and the edge loops to where you want them. Um, you can see now uh, to get some of that symmetry, I'm going in with my X symmetry turned on, getting one side of the side right, usually my left side, and then I just hit mirror and weld. I use that so much that I've docked it to my toolbar at the bottom. Um, it's a big, big thing for me. Uh, now what I'm doing is kind of rotating the side around, so I'm moving my, my line of symmetry. Probably would have been a lot easier if I just switched from X to Y or Z, but again, I'm a, I'm a 2D guy, so I always get those uh, I get those things confused, so probably would have been way easier to do it that way. But now that I have those in there, I'm going to go and you'll see that I'm welding points. So by welding these points on the arm of this psi, I'm actually making it so that I have a, a continual line of, um, uh, of, of geo there that I can uh, insert. When I insert my uh, edge loop, it it goes all the way through it rather than just kind of breaking over to the side um, and sizing the tip and now what I can uh, what I can do is turn on dynamic subdivision and I don't have to worry about dividing this thing and hoping it's right uh, I can still keep it at that very low maybe 100 to 100 point 100 and, looks like 186 point uh, geometry and I selected the slide uh, edge loop complete and by doing that I'm able to get more of a rounded shape. I just grab the corners of the uh, of the box there and pull them in and get kind of what I'm looking for. I find that when I get over to the points just to, to make it a little easier I think I switch to the move topological uh, in a minute here and that's going to help me get exactly what I want in addition to using the transpose. Once I get one side pretty much how I want I'll just mirror and weld and then again I'll have my symmetry and, and everything is, is fantastic and uh, and that's pretty much the shape of the Psy. I use that for like I said for the katanas for the the, the straps I go in and uh, manipulate the um, the points and kinda get them to really conform to the the shape of either the leg that it's wrapping around or arm or whatever it is. So just about done with this Psy I'm just masking off areas um, and moving points until I get this exactly the way that I want. And when it's finished, I will divide it and be done, move on to the next thing. I just like how easy it is um, to use Z Modeler to, you know, again, keep that polygon count low and really kind of quickly get exactly what I want as far as the shape goes. And, uh, and then move on to the next tool. It saves me a lot of time and it's all about saving time when you have a deadline.